I, we will take a different twist. I've left you here before, but tonight we will talk in particular about dreams and the African connection as how it relates to the pineal. Now, many of you are well aware that since, since August of this year, there has been an explosion in the subject on melatonin, M-A-L-A-T-O-N-I-N, the hormone released by the pineal gland during the hours of darkness. It is so widespread in health food stores in two and three milligram sizes. They can keep enough on the shelf. It's been published and talked about on the front cover of Newsweek. They've even had shows on ABC, Nightline, and others, um, 2020, about melatonin. There have been articles written in the LA Times editorial section. So it's a hot subject, but why now? Why now? The pineal gland, melatonin, is not, it is said, it is something that is relatively not known about. There have been three books that have been talked about widely. One of them written by a person named Russell Ritter, who is the editor of the journal called Pineal Research. However, if you go to UCLA tonight or tomorrow, you can't even check out the journal of Pineal Research. They will tell you that they stopped carrying it in 1991. How can that be? I was there last year in September of 1994. And I saw, I pulled right off the current periodical shelf up to the year 1994. It meant it's time to suppress. Too high, that information. We studied about the pineal gland at Martha King Hospital way back in 1976. I had the pleasure of writing a paper called the Pineal Gland Review in 1973. In 1976, we were working on pineal calcification at the Fanon Center. So this, this notion that there's not much known about the pineal is just another example of what? White supremacy propaganda. But it fits a much larger mission. The mission is disinformation to make people afraid to use their own minds. Afraid to use their own minds. If you talk about dreams, you have an experience I had on front page the other morning. Brother said, the brother got kind of hot. He's a good brother. I don't want to be harsh with the brother. He's a good brother. I'm going to meet up soon. <laughs> and the brother said, oh, you're bringing up white office. As if Rudolf Steiner, Church of Light, the Kabbalah, and others were the first one to talk about dreams and spirituality. If you talk about spirituality, you may say, oh, you're talking about doing negative works, but that's in somebody's mind. But clearly forgetting that the first revolution that took place in the Americas was in Palmyra, in Brazil, and they practiced active African spirituality and religion, and they held a free nation state for 100 years and fought off all comers. And the second one took place in Haiti, and it was a revolution to this day that they're definitely afraid of because it involved African spirituality, which was misnamed voodoo and put a negative label on it. Having you afraid of your own spirituality, your own psychic powers, painting it as if, if you talk these dreams, the devil's gonna get you. You end up being a sex maniac. You're gonna be a walking zombie who's doing the negative thing. They paint only the worst images because that's what they do with it. That's what they do. So as we approach this question of dreams, and the African, I do have, I will have a slideshow. It's very extensive. So I'm going to give you a lecture first for about a half hour and then go on to slides and lectures. I give you the slideshow. And we have about 60 slides to cover because I want to clearly to show to you that this notion of the African approach to dreams is the foundation of all mental science. Foundation. But notice, if, 
Let's go to the comedic name for dreams. Do you know what it means? To see. So dreams, from a comedic perspective, the, the metronetra name means to see or to visualize. And so when we go to sleep at night, or even during the daytime, when we have visions during the day, we are simply using our great minds. But the model of the mind that is presented by Europeans is a false, corrupt model. It's incomplete. They paint a model that your mind is only that which you've experienced in your own personal lifetime, as if you have no part of your mind can look into the future. No part of your mind can look into, the, into your, your parents' bloodline. As if those, if you get into those realms, that's called pseudoscience, false science, witchcraft, voodoo, called something negative, the dark sciences. When you get into it from an African perspective and get into it real deep, you readily see that the African perspective fully embraced a spirituality that did not know no boundaries of time and space. So what is commonly being presented by the Rosicrucians, Church of Light, is really ancient African science cut down, watered down, adapted to their perspective, and they hide the African origins. Have you ever heard of a name by a person named of Pascal Beverly Randolph? P.B. Randolph? Let's take this, this name just for a little sideline. Some of you probably have. And I'll, if I give you a name, I want to give you a reference. Pascal Beverly Randolph, you know, he has a recent book that was republished called Sexual Magic. Don't get thrown off by the title, please. You can find other books of mine through health research. Pascal Beverly Randolph was born in the 1820s. He was born of a Madagascan mean black woman who was born off island off the west coast of Tanzania. <laughs> mother who was a seer, S-E-E-R. What does that mean? She could see and do works in the invisible realm. So you don't get down to what does that have to do with African history? You see, I'm saying African, the African history that we're trying to expose now is embracing a deepness of spirituality and you know, learning how to use these powers for African liberation. The same way that it was done in Haiti, the same one that it was done in Palmyra, in Brazil. It's fundamental. Anyway, Pascal Beverly Randolph, then he, his father was a white boy who had probably used his mother in some negative fashion. Nonetheless, he, the father disowned him, and Pascal Beverly Randolph, as a child, then left and joined and became a merchant seaman or a sailor. In all likelihood, he sailed in black ships owned by black men, one of them being Paul Cuffrey of the New England area. Paul Cuffrey is a man who bought his own freedom and had three ships who ran from, ran from the eastern seaboard down to Europe, down to the Middle East, down to points in Africa. This is all taking place in the early 1800s when slavery is going full steam. Pascal Beverly Randolph then by his own introductions, is exposed to so-called secret teachings and becomes an initiate and founds, guess what? The Rosicrucians in the United States. A black man named Pascal Beverly Randolph founded that. He also founded, well, guess what else? The Prince Hall Masons in the United States. And he also worked with, guess what else? He was a friend of Abraham Lincoln. He worked with the Freedmen's Bureau in Louisiana. But guess what happened to him? He was ostracized, and eventually he was killed. He said he committed suicide. Me and brother got deep-witted in a very, very major way. And from his works, another person by the name of Clymer copied his works, and those works were also transported back to Europe and became the foundation for some of the works of Rudolf Steiner. So this one.